Shalom, brothers and sisters and family. Shalom. Welcome to the live Shabbat class. This is your host, Jeremiah Israel. Welcome to another Sabbath day. Before we get started, those who are new or return visitors, please hit the like and subscribe button and share my lessons. Doesn't cost a thing. Uh, trying to get my message across the YouTube algorithm. So, liking and subscribing will, will be very helpful. Uh, this is a teaching ministry, and you will be notified. If you hit the subscribe button, you will be notified if, each time I upload a new lesson. Uh, my ministry is according to Zephaniah 2 and 1. Gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation, not desired. And how do we gather? Jeremiah 29 and 5, build ye houses and live in them. Plant ye gardens and eat the fruit of them. Most like God didn't tell us to open up camps inside of our enemies' communities. He told us to be separate. And then I will receive you. Come from among them, my people, and be ye separate. And touch not the unclean things. Everything in our communities are unclean. So how can you, how can anybody help you while you're still in an unclean community? Touch not the unclean things. What makes you unclean? What makes you profane? You living in the hood, you can look outside your door and everything you're looking at is unclean. Anyway, if you guys want to support this ministry, you can go to Amazon.com. I have a total of 17 books available that you can potentially buy. These are study guides, doesn't replace the Bible, but they're chopped with precepts. Biblical events. This this is this book is re referring to all the major stories of the Bible. You know, in the beginning, the flood, Samson and Delilah, and Delilah, David and Goliath. Uh, some of the uh, the important women of the Bible, such as Tamar, Judith. Uh, and a few other women, Deborah, also the prophecies of Daniel, Sodom and Gomorrah, Daniel and the lion's den. It's it's a, it's a it's a good read for those who want to. Know what the scriptures are, referring these, referring these, uh, these events and the topics. I think I did a little, enough research to, you know, to put some of the better uh, topics of the Bible that everyone should should know. It's a basis of, of of your knowledge base. If you are trying to get the milk, you know, you you want to have these stories to heart, have these stories to heart, to understand the great women of the Bible. And 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 there, and you know, a lot of times these great women of the Bible save the nation of Israel altogether. Save the save the Jews, because if it wasn't for Hadassah, we would Haman would have killed us all. Had us had us all dead. Had 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 he uh been able to execute his plan he was trying to kill all the Jews in all 127 provinces during that time so he would have killed us all there probably been a few uh, stragglers that were not in those provinces but he would have had us all dead down there if it wasn't for Hadassah anyway 
Now, if you want to purchase one of our books, go to Amazon.com. Put this name in the put this name here in the search line. And all my books should come up. Put this name Yeremiah, Y E R I M I Y A H, Israel. In the search line on Amazon.com, all my books should come up. I have a total of 17 books. If you want this book available at the library, you would need, if you have a library card, you can go to the library website, on the, you uh, search, put on the search line on Amazon.com, this name, and hit enter. And the link for biblical events will come up. Biblical events. You need three uh, pieces of information. You need the name of the author. You need the name of the book. And you need this this number here, this ISBN number. And all that not, all that information will be available on that page. So without further ado, let us get to our topic. Shalom, Israel. This includes you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Those of the diaspora dispersed throughout the Americas. Africa, India, Europe, Asia, and the islands. Those of the Sub-Saharan and the Transatlantic Slave Trade. My topic today is how do the Israelites fix the problems in their communities? Let me say that again. How do the Israelites fix the problems in their communities? This is an age-old question that the Israelites have been asking and dealing with since slavery. Instead of the Israelites doing as the Most High God commanded, we ran back to our enemies, and many Israelites have made their enemies their God, obeying their commandments and not the Most High God's commandment. First, the Most High will show you how the Israelites are presently behaving today, the same as they have behaved yesterday. 2 Maccabees 4 and 13. Now such was the height of Greek fashion and increase of heathenous manners through the exceeding profaneness of Jason, that ungodly wretch and no high priest. Greek fashion is at its height today, such as Nike, Balenciaga, Birkin, Adidas, Ralph Lauren, LVMN, Prada, etc. And these designers are getting bolder with their heathenist designs, exposing more and more flesh. They have dresses that are completely see-through, and women are wearing these dresses in public with thong underwear. Many of the Israelite leaders support this wickedness. They allow ungodly people and ungodly behavior in their congregation. They are profane in the sight of Yah. Now the fact is, you have designers that they have designed see-through, see-through dresses. And a lot of women don't even put bras on them. So they, they, they body is exposed. The only thing they walk around and you can see clearly everything. Thong underwear and everything. As a matter of fact, when I was working, uh, it was like 2013, 2012, there was a woman walking around the airport with one of those type dresses on. She was butt naked. Basically butt naked. Nothing but a thong on, see through everything. Breast out everything. It was actually two women, two white women, both, both, one had a, a, a green one like that one, and the other one had a, like a, a beige's color one like that. And I was like, damn, where the police? Cause this is, this is lewd. Second Maccabees 4 and 14, that the priests had no courage to serve anymore at the altar, but despising the temple and neglecting the sacrifices, hastened to be partakers of the unlawful allowance in the place of exercise after the game of discus called them forth. 
Christians want to serve the Most High Yah, just like right now, their God is NFL, MLB, NBA, all of these gods, because this is what was happening in the beginning. They stopped. They didn't want to serve the Most High. That is why, when when that is why all of these enemies came upon us. We don't. We didn't want to serve. You know, when the Most High God was our protection, it, it provided us everything. We decided we want to be like the enemies. Do as they do. Very few pastors, bishops, reverends have courage to serve the Most High God. Yet they will remain in the pulpit preaching a prosperity gospel which is not similar to prosperity that is found in the scriptures. Joshua 1 and 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. This is the prosperity doctrine of the Bible. You don't let you, you study the law. The prosperity that is found in the Bible is the result from learning the law, knowing the law, and doing the law. Prosperity was never based on being selfish and hoarding money in Israel. Everyone would be equal in the kingdom of heaven. So if you're trying to get to the riches of heaven, you're not going to be, you're not going to get in through being wealthy and hoarding up, hoarding up money and stuff, buying 20,000 square foot houses that only you're going to live in. I'm trying to understand. You buy a house big enough to house 20 people in. But you're going to live in it yourself. And, and somebody could be living on the other side of your house. You will never know about it. Because you're not going in every room of your house. Second Maccabees 4 and 15. Not setting by the honors of their fathers but like in the glory of the Grecians, best of all. Most of the present day Israelites do not know Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, Christ, etc. They do not do the things that are prescribed by our forefathers, but they love Esau and the things that he has provided them in this world. Deuteronomy 11 and 16. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived and ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Do not think that the Most High Yah is not watching you. He gives straight commandments, but Israelites do not obey them. But yet, they want to pray to him for a blessing in their wickedness. I, I, I don't get that. Now, the things that the Most High God tell you not to do, Thou should have no other God before me. But Christmas is a God. That's, that's a Nimrod's birthday. It ain't, has nothing to do about with Christ. Because in Jeremiah, they was doing that. To, they were praying. They was hanging up trees for Nimrod back then, 587 BCE, 605 BCE. And Jeremiah, in Jeremiah 10, tell you, thus said the Lord, learn not the ways of the heathen. And be not dismayed at the sign of heaven. You know, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For one cut of the tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workers with an axe. They deck it with sil silver and gold. So they were celebrating Christmas. The uh, Babylonians were celebrating Christmas back then and it had nothing to do with Christ. And it was not called Christmas back then. But you want to pray over that Christmas dinner and over that Thanksgiving dinner. 
John, do not think that the Most High God is what is not watching you. He gives straight commandments, but Israelites do not obey them. But yet they want to pray to him for for blessings in their wickedness. John 9:31. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he hear it. God don't hear sinners. You want to be out there praying over Christmas turkey, uh, doing anything that's wicked, and then want to pray. Oh, let's pray over it. Let's, let's pray. You want to be praying over some, some food that the Most High God told you to, not to eat. Shrimp, crab, lobster, and ham, and, and all types of pork, and, and, and raw meats, and all kinds. Oh, let's, let's, let's bow our heads. Most High God ain't listening to you because he tells you not to eat that. And you want to pray over something that he tell you not to do? It, it gets me calm. I'm like, wow. That's, 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 how, how, how stupid have your enemies made, made y'all? What makes you think the most high y'all listens to your prayers when you show him that you do not love him? His commandments are not hard to do, but the majority of the Israelites will not keep them. When your children are disobedient, will not do anything you command them, do you still give them the same blessings that you would give them if they were obedient to you? Remember, we are made in the Most High God's image, meaning that he gets angry just as we do. He tell you not to do something, but you do it anyway, and you think he's going to be sitting there like, oh, I'm going to bless him, give him all these blessings because these are my son. No, most of God don't do that. Love comes with pun punishment and pain. Your parents say they whoop, when they whoop your butt, I love you, but you know what? They, you're going to you're gonna get the switch. You're going to you're gonna get your butt whooped. You're going to come with some pain. 2 Maccabees 4 and 16. By reason whereof, sore calamity came upon them, for they had them to be their enemies and avengers, whose customs they followed so earnestly, and unto whom they desired to be like in all things. Wow. That's us right today. When, 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 a, when a cop shoots you, one of your children down in, in, in broad daylight, for doing nothing. When you get choked out. Handcuffed. And you choked out and die. Right there on, on the site. Because he's choking you. While your hands are up. You're handcuffed. And you die. And you go to your. You, you march and pick it to your enemy. That did that to you. Every time some injustice happened to the Israelites, we are protesting, marching, having sit-ins, going before white Jesus, wanting to know why he let that happen to us, and what is he going to do about it? What about the Israelites obeying the voice of their God and doing all that he commands? The Israelites will try everything else except that. Instead, the Israelites want to be like their oppressors in all things. They fight to eat in the same restaurant, live in the same communities, marry among them. What did the Most High Yah command the Israelites to do? While in Babylon, what are the Israelites supposed to be doing? The Bible is a road map giving the Israelites the directions and instructions in which they should do. Many of our leaders, including camp leaders, do not adhere to the road map. They have created one, one of their own and are leading the members straight to hell. I said it. A lot of y'all y'all glorify these camps, but y'all camps ain't doing them but leading you straight to hell. I'm going to see if any of them doing this. Let's see if they do this. Matthew 23 and 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. You don't want nobody nobody going into the kingdom of heaven because you're not allowing them to go. 
You shut you shutting the kingdom of heaven up. The Pharisees were teaching the law, but they did not do the works that are required. I'm going to go over a few things that the Most High specifically commanded the Israelites to do while we are in captivity. Jeremiah 29 and 4. Thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem into Babylon. Many Israelites know that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob created a covenant with the Israelites and told them what would happen if they did not hearken to his voice and do all of his commandments. Deuteronomy 28, 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now everybody know that. Everybody in Israel knows this. Now, this letter from Jeremiah, he, most like God admitted to being responsible for putting you in captivity. Why? Because you didn't hearken. The curses include slavery or captivity. The Most High God is telling you that he is responsible for your captivity. He did not cast the Israelites away. He is only punishing his children as a righteous father does. Romans 11 and 1. I say then, had God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. This is, this is Apostle Paul talking. Although he punishes his children, the Israelites are still his children. When your parents righteously chastise you, they do it in love and not in hate. They only want your obedience and want you to grow up righteous. Hebrews 12 and 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If you're not being punished for disobedience, then the Most High God does not consider you as his son. Every race upon the earth is not a child of Yah. Only the twelve tribes of Israel. When the Most High God punishes the Israelites, he does not punish a few of us, but all of us. He didn't just put a few few of us, a couple of people here and a couple of people there into slavery. He, like I'm saying, he sent the enemies against us. And they, and they chased us down all over Africa. We were captured all over Africa. When the Jews were pl placed into slavery, all of us were pl th thrown into captivity. They, sh they had us shipped out all over, the, all over the world. For the four corners of the world. Some far and some near. Hebrews 12 and, 12 and 7. If ye endure chastening, God deal it with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chastiseth not? The way to endure chastisement, you must take that time, repent, confess your sins as the congregation, and return to his laws. When Yah punishes the Israelites, when Yah punished the Israelites, he provided a plan to rebuild the Israelites. Jeremiah 29 and 5. Build ye houses and dwell in them, and plant gardens and eat the fruit of them. First, while the Israelites were in captivity, the Most High, Most High commanded them to build their own communities. He did not tell us to march up and down the streets. He did not tell the Israelites to congregate among the enemies. As long as the Israelites have been a people, the Most High has never told us to congregate among our enemies. Exodus three and eighteen. And when he when when he uh when when Moses came to the Pharaoh, he told them to let my people go three days and a half into the wilderness so that they can worship me. The Most High God don't want to be worshipped among the enemies. So y'all gotta understand the will of the Father. That's His will. His will is never to be worshipped among the enemies. And y'all want to be still still here. Worshiping the Most High Yah among your enemies. That ain't his will. He, he, is, he, he shows you who he is and y'all don't understand who he is. But you want to worship him the way you want to worship him. It, 
If you want to see a see a Pharisee or Sadducee, those who fought against Christ, go to any of these camps and you will see them. See one. What did Christ say about these Pharisees? Matthew 15, 7. Ye hypocrites. What did Isaiah prophesy of you saying? This is what Christ called the Pharisees, hypocrites. Most of these camps claim to be commandment keepers, but I have not seen them organized to build Israelite communities and create farms for growing our own food. They are too busy fighting among themselves when they have the responsibility of rebuilding the nation. Hypocrites. Matthew 15 and 8. This people draw nigh unto me with their mouth and honored me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. These are like camps draw near to the Most High claiming to love him and are keeping his commandments, but their efforts show no progress in building communities and growing their own food. Because of these two things, those Israelites who have repented and are still living in hoods, burials, they are being subjected to unnecessary wickedness. Hypocrites. Matthew 15 and 9. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. These camp doctrines have created many different commandments, such as preventing their members from interacting with members of the other Israelite camps. They are not working together, but they cannot claim to love, but they can but they cannot claim to love Yah and hate their brothers, right? First John 4 and 20. For man say I love God and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? If you are convicting others with the word of Yah, his words can also be applied to convict yourself. Jeremiah 29 and 6. Take ye wives and beget sons and daughters, and take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters, that ye may be increased there and not diminished. The righteous Israelites are supposed to separate themselves from even their brothers and sisters. This community that the Israelites are commanded to build does not include the wicked and unrighteous. The Israelites are commanded to separate from unbelievers. This includes family and friends. Once an Israelite repents and has faith in Christ, he or she cannot continue down the same path doing or hanging around wicked people. 2 Corinthians 6 and 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion had light with darkness? The following precepts refer to family and friends. Once an Israelite repents, he or she cannot be hanging out with unbelievers, which include most, if not all, of your family members. They are not going to adhere to the dietary, moral, civil, and ceremonial laws. They will make you profane and unclean if the eyes of Yah, in the eyes of Yah, because more than likely they will not consider your dietary requirements. Your keeping of the Sabbath, new moons and feast days. They ain't going to consider that. Girl, I want to go to the movies today. You know, no, 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 can't go to the movies today. It's a new moon. But, oh, oh, girl, you can go, you, you can go today. It's it just going to be, you know, it, it's going to be some excuse. Second Corinthians 6 and 15. And what con concord had Christ with Bilal? Or what part had he that believe it with an uh, infidel. If your family is celebrating Thanksgiving and Christmas, you cannot join them and claim to be a repentant Israelite. Christ do not make deals with devils. 1 Corinthians 10 and 20. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Your family are devils. You got people that sacrifice, you know, oh, we go on Christmas, we have Christmas dinner, you know, and, and all this stuff. That's a sacrifice to devil. When you're cooking that burnt meat, that's cause that's what the Israelites did, you know, the Levites did. When they brought when they brought an animal sacrifice, that they cooked that meat. You know, they didn't cook the whole animal. They cooked the, you know, parts parts of it. 
that that they they were supposed to cook the rest of it they took home for themselves the the the, the priest that was doing the uh sacrifice he kept the rest of the animal but he put the other animal up on the grill and cooked it didn't burn it because once it was cooked the other levites and stuff ate it with him now no outsiders could eat it but just the levites Consider this, you are a repentant Israelite and your family and friends are sacrificing to devils when they are celebrating Thanksgiving and Christmas and in your learning of the law, you know it is wrong and not acceptable of God. It should be easy for you to stay stay away. You be like, nah, you come, you're not coming over for Thanksgiving? No, I'm not coming. You're not coming over for Christmas? No, I'm not coming. Oh, she's so anti. He's so anti-social. No, that, you don't told him. I don't told y'all a million times. God don't want us celebrating Christmas and Thanksgiving. That ain't in the Bible. And in the Bible, it tells you not to do it, but y'all do it anyway. I don't show you the precept. Jeremiah ten. I don't show it to you, but y'all still doing it. So no, I'm not. I'm not coming. First Corinthians 10 and 21. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the, ta and of the table of devils. You have to you have to make a choice. Either you are going to serve the most high on or you will continue to serve Satan. 2 Corinthians 6 and 16. And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God had said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The Most High God dwells in us. Repentant Israelites are being subjected to all types of uncleanness and profanation because they do not have a community of their own. How can the Most High dwell in many of us when Israelites are subjected to the most unclean, evil, and wicked environments in the cities? 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Now you can understand, you can see the will of God that I'm, I'm putting before you. Because the first, the first thing in Jeremiah, when Most High God said he was responsible for us being into captivity, what he told us to do, build ye houses and dwell in them, separate, build your own community, plant ye gardens and eat the fruit of them, separate, don't be eating from the enemy's food, eat your, grow your own food. Now, 1 Corinthians 6, 2 Corinthians 6 and 17 says, Wherefore come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. You're not being received until you do all of these things that the Most High God told you to do. He ain't receiving you by marching up and down the street. That, that has zero effect on our salvation. None. Y'all call me haters if you want. I'm bringing the scripture to you. If you could say I'm being hateful, all right, then you know what? You can tell it to the Most High. Because he put this in the Bible before I was even born. I wouldn't even thought of it when this was written. Now, if you want to be righteous, these are the things that we're supposed to be doing while in Babylon. When the Israelites repent and return to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they're commanded to separate, working to build a separate Israelite community from even their families, any, anybody who loves and follows the world and not after the Most High in Christ. A repentant Israelite cannot be hanging out together with any unbeliever. The Most High will only receive the Israelites when we separate and remove ourselves from unclean things which is everywhere around us. Then the Israelites can 
dedicate the newly built community and have a feast that has not been seen since the Maccabees. Right now, the Israelites have no reason to make a dedication to the Most High because they are not separated from the unclean and the profane. We're in the, we, we're in, we are right now in the condition as when the Maccabees, before the Maccabees took back over the temple, when they were putting pork and stuff on the temple and all kinds of, probably had shrimp and all kinds of stuff on, on the temple. We probably... Right now, at, we're at that because everything around us is unclean. You go in your supermarkets, the only thing they're selling you is catfish and shrimp, crab and lobster, everything you can't eat. Call them the seafood. Oh, they, they might have some tilapia, but I don't eat that. Because you know what? They, they put tilapia in, in, in a septic tank environments. And have the tilapia eating the poop, you know, eating poop and stuff. I'm like, I'm not eating that. They don't even have to feed the tilapia, you know. They put them in waste waste tanks that they grow up big. Right now, we ain't got no. What what you know the feast of dedication? What are we what are we dedicating? Because when when the Maccabees did the feast of dedication, we were dedicating the temple. We don't have a temple no more. So what do we have to dedicate? If you want to have a feast of dedication, find you know be part of that dedication. Find something that you could do something that you can dedicate to the Most High. We ain't got nothing to dedicate to the Most High right now. We're not doing the work to dedicate anything to the Most High. We don't have a now. We built a community and and all of this stuff. When we have, when we come around to the feast of dedication, we would have a feast of dedication because we would have something that we can dedicate to the Most High God, to our God, something that He told us to build and we did. Jeremiah twenty nine and seven. And seek the peace of the city whither I have caused you to be carried away captives and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. While the Israelites are in captivity, and yes, the Israelites are still in captivity, the Israelites are supposed to build separate communities even from the, uncle even from the unclean and profane Israelites. The repentant Israelites are also supposed to be creating farms, greenhouses, growing their own food. Show me where the Israelites are supposed to be marching up and down the streets. Furthermore, the Israelites are supposed to be obeying the laws, keeping the peace in whatever city the Israelites are living. Show me where in the scriptures the Israelites were on, were on the corner agitating and contesting with their oppressors. These camps took one aspect of the scriptures and incorrectly ran with it. I'm going to show you that er their error. I'm going to stop here. And we're going to start at giving the sense. We're going to start there. Wow. We're going to start that next week. Uh, please do not forget to hit the like and the subscribe button. It is beneficial to me and it's beneficial to you. Because each time I upload a new lesson, you get the opportunity to be notified in in, in and learn something. I'm not going to come out. Of, I'm not going to go against the scriptures. I'm not going to add nothing to the scriptures. I'm going to show you precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Now if you think that it, that is being manipulative of the scriptures. That is because that is how the Most High God told us to 
apply the scriptures. Isaiah 28, I think 28, 9 and 10. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. For precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Now, that's not manipulating the scriptures when you apply it that way. Because what you will find in Isaiah, you will find in Matthew, Luke, John. You might find in uh, 1 Corinthians, 2 Thessalonians, Revelations, Joel. Here a little and there a little. Because the prophets in Christ and the apostles said they said the same thing. Anyway, hope you guys got some out of this. And again, uh, if you want to support my ministry, this is my last book. You can go to Amazon.com, put this name in the uh, search line, and you will see all the books that I have written come up. I have uh, a total of 17 books. Okay. And if you want to purchase a book, you can get it in ebook, paperback, and hard copy. And with that family and friends, I like to say, Shalom. Shalom.